break it free from the mainstream, the studio machine. I want it my way. Indie film nation, you know it's gotta be. Indie film nation. Hi, Sue Lawson here from Indie Film Nation, talking to part, a large part of the team that brought us The Return of Action Man. We've got Roy Chung, who's the exec executive producer, Scott Peters, the director and visuals, and Scott, I think you even wrote it as well. Maybe Bryant Jansen will be joining us. He's the DP. And of course, Robert, also known as Bobby Brinkerhoff, the sound designer and composer, again, of The Return of Action Man. So thanks, guys. Thanks for joining us here today. I really appreciate it. Talk a little bit about the film. Okay. Basis, basic premise of the film. Scott, I think you're the writer. You should probably go ahead and address that one for us. Okay. Well, we all kind of came up with the story together. You know, we there was sort of definitely a collaboration. Um, the story is it's a short, you know, 10-minute uh, movie about a guy who gets abducted and ends up in sort of an alternate dimension where he has a run-in with some religious fanatics. And it kind of goes from there. Um, some of the themes it explores are, you know, fanaticism and how technology is kind of, you know, deranged society and things like that. But it's done in, you know, a fun, weird, dark comedy way. So what was the genesis of the project? Where did you guys come up with the idea? Um, yeah, I think for me, the genesis, I was just, I was reading a lot of uh, uh, Haruki Murakami, um, the Japanese novelist. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I really liked about his stories are just the, the how he, you know, uses surrealism in a really interesting, fun way. And I kind of wanted to do something like that because of the, just the visual opportunities and the, and just the, the fun of that. It really uh, appealed to me. Visually, it's it's a very impressive film. It's very interesting looking to begin with. So before you even see the film, just looking at the trailer makes you want to see the film. So congratulations to you guys for bringing that together and for the editor for going ahead and bringing your vision to the screen that way. Bobby, Roy, how did you guys get involved with the project? Go ahead, Roy. Uh, so... We got involved with the project because uh, uh, we have a long-term working relationship with Scott in our no normal day-to-day -day work. Scott is a uh, visual designer, uh, an animator that works with our production studio, Possible, on a lot of our client-facing projects, which involve uh, designing animation for world tours, broadcast events, things like that. And we all, a lot of us at the studio have a filmmaking background and are always interested in pursuing uh, more narrative storytelling. And so when Scott came to us with this uh, idea for a, a short film, uh, we are excited to jump on board. So you guys have collaborated before. Is this the first collaboration on a narrative fee or narrative short like this? Uh, we've direct, uh, Scott has actually directed a few different live action shoots uh, with us before, but this is the first narrative piece uh, that we've done. Uh, in terms of there being uh, a fully developed script. A lot of the other ones we've done have been more abstract conceptual pieces for concerts and stuff like that. Bobby, how did approaching this differ from the other projects that you've been working on? Well, I guess, I mean, the, all the, like Roy said, all the projects we typically work on together, um, it's, uh, they're not, they're not short films. They're usually, uh, serving a purpose of they're like an element in a show, uh, an element in a concert or, or uh, you know, an opening ceremony to an event or something. And this was a cinematic piece. And uh, also, like Roy said, we all have film backgrounds. Scott and I actually went to film school together here uh, in Southern California, and we actually grew up together. So the thing that I loved about approaching this film is we were able to directly apply Scott and I's love for uh, analog synthesizers and a lot of uh, scores from like the late 70s, like Vangelis stuff or like Wendy Carlos stuff. So 
typically a lot of work we're hired to do, you know, you're, you, you have to take the uh, orders from whoever the client is. But in this case, we got to like dig deep into something that not everybody's looking for, you know, when they're trying to sell stuff or do a cool concert. So uh, I think that, that was the biggest approach. Really, I've got to bring in tons of sense, sense that Scott owns himself, which isn't something we get to do every day, you know, in our work. So that would part you was awesome. Would you consider this to be a passion project for the three of you? Definitely. Well, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, it, go ahead. No. Don't let me step on your no, line, no, guys. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Who knows what was going to come out? I'm glad. <laughs> That's what I want to know. What was going to come out? <laughs> Let's talk about making this during the pandemic, I'm assuming. did Had, had it been in, in planning stages before that hit? Or was the pandemic the catalyst that gave you the time to sit there and say, okay, we can do this now? Well, this is how you know it's a passion project because Scott. Scott it, it, it was a it was a long it. project. We filmed it long before the pandemic. Um, I think the pandemic was the thing that allowed the mental space to just buckle down and finally finish off the visual effects aspect of it. But we shot it years ago, and it was just there were so many visual effects involved that it was a you know trying to fit that around other projects was it was just a very very long process. And I think the pandemic opened up a window to just you know, nail, nail it down. So let's talk about the, how long this process took. When did you start filming everything? Um, geez, I think I've mentally suppressed a lot of that because of the trauma <laughs> involved, but, uh, Roy, when we was filmed, it? Uh, we filmed in July of 2018. Um, and, uh, we actually made pretty, or Scott, I should say made, I mean, he did the line chart of the visual effects, uh, and the editing as well, uh, but we made pretty good progress. And by 2019, we had a rough cut. But then, after several rounds of back and forth, um, Scott thought that he could do just a, a better job and, uh, at the visual effects and improve it. So, I think we've redone the entire movie maybe three or four times, like from <laughs> soup to nuts. I was gonna um, say five times, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like where we had like a, a, a more or less finished cut, and then Scott just went in and was like, "We can get it better." And yeah, and oh, here, here we go. We got Brian, uh, our DP, joining us here. Brian, welcome. I'm glad you're able to make some time for us today. Yes. So, Brian, now that you're here, we're all gonna dump on you. Yeah, happy to be here. Sorry about that. I'm, no, uh, not a problem at all. Stage tell me, because... tell me about about making this movie. I understand. Roy was just telling me that hey, this is something that was shot a couple of years ago. This is pre-pandemic shooting. How do you think that your um, your style would have changed if you had to do it during this time, oh, or yeah. would it have? Let's talk about your style for shooting this film. Um. You know, I think the style really came down from the creative in general. You know, we did a lot of previs. Um, Scott and I talked about what we wanted. Um, kind of Scott was rendering out sort of rough versions of the camera movement and of the sequences. So I don't know if it would have necessarily changed very much. Um, I think this was, you know, I, I try not to have a definitive style in general in my work. I, I think it's more... Um, you know, what fits the project best. So to me, I, I think I would, the style would stay the same and maybe, maybe Scott and I would have, would make different choices just because, you know, it's later in our lives. But in general, I, I feel like, uh, this was very pre-planned, very kind of, uh, thought out beforehand. Um, so I'm not sure if that answered the question, but I don't know if in terms of style, anything would have changed or if my style has evolved. I think it was more, you know, this project, we we kind of had some goals and set that out and really kind of set it up beforehand. And then it was more or less execution because it was very VFX based. Let's talk about the uh, the technical side of things. What was it shot on? So we filmed on... Uh, an Aerie Alexa Mini, um, and we kind of took care to try to find some of our the films that we really liked, what lenses they were shot on. So we we were finding that they were shot on some Panavision Super Speed lenses. So we kind of 
aimed in that direction and Panavision was was great and got us the got us exactly those lenses. Um, so we were trying to use sort of a, an updated palette to kind of some of our Spielberg-y, you know, <laughs> 80s films references of lenses. Um, and I think we pretty much got the exact set of lenses we were we were looking for in that regard. And as far as editing's concerned, Scott, you did the majority of that work. What what were you working with? Well, I was uh, I I cut it on Premiere Pro, um, and uh, you know I, I I'm not an editor, so it was really a process of me just laying it out and then showing everyone else that we're talking to here and and getting everyone's feedback about you know how it's flowing and how it's working. So it, it you know I, I definitely stole the credit for the editing, but it's it's <laughs> it's, it's it was a collaboration. Um, but yeah, Premiere Pro is what we used. Okay, plans for distribution of this. Yeah, we're uh, we've got a friend who who uh, is is in distribution for short films that we're talking with about about putting it online. Um, but we're we're currently, I guess, we're you know waiting to see uh, how the festival you know uh, get it in festivals and mm -hmm. get through that process and then think about um, distrib distributing. Well, you yeah. guys have a lot of. Uh talent and experience that you bring to this project to begin with. But is there anything that you learned working on this that you will carry forward with you into the next project? Either do or a don't. Scott, do you want to take this one? I think it's a pretty obvious one. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's always, a, there's, there are a lot of things that we had to do out of necessity on this project just because we didn't have the money to do it the way that we, that we wanted to do it, you know, like, um, a lot of the visual effects were were ground up constructions of the entire world. Like we shot it on a green screen psych, mm -hmm. um, and in a perfect world, we would have been able to build sets and work with more set extension type stuff and just have it more in camera. Um, and for me, that's that would be the thing that I would want to do in a future project. Is like just all through the post process, the stuff I was most confident in was the stuff that was in camera because it was just, it was all Bryant. It was like Bryant had these badass looking images and it was just a matter of editing them where, you know, the visual effects stuff, it was more dependent on constructing the entire look from a, from a, a green screen plate. So that was, you know, that's just such a lengthy process. And there's a lot of freedom and flexibility in that, but that can also be sort of a double-edged sword because like, like Roy was saying, we ended up redoing it so many times and that freedom can be a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a challenge in post. And I, I think, I think um, for me, that would be like a future project would be more just locking more decisions in camera, um, having the budget to do that. And, and then the post would be like more of a, a sweetening thing rather than constructing it from the ground up. Guys, anything else that you guys have learned through the process? Uh, the Scott's a genius with post-production. <laughs> I mean, everybody, <laughs> cause like he was saying, I, I think this was such a fun project, but things that we got to shoot were, uh, it was, it was wonderful when we're shooting on location, but then we're shooting on just a blank green screen. Uh, you know, with the general idea of where we were going to go. Uh, but to see it kind of completely work and come to fruition was pretty amazing. And I feel like, you know, I, I'm sure there was many people involved in, in or, or other people involved in the post production, but uh, I, I was really impressed by what Scott was able to do um, with like some tracking marks in a green environment. <laughs> and we were... <laughs> Uh, also, the pre-visualization of this project was was really a, a good learning experience in general because we having these sequences visualized and then seeing them come to fruition completely was something that I do bring into my work. Even now, I do a lot of VFX heavy stuff, um, and since then, I've done a lot more VFX heavy stuff, and that was a good learning experience for going through that process. Bruce, I saw you pop in for a second. Did you have a question? Yeah, so basically, um, was I, I got the moral of the story here is basically um, don't click on spyware. <laughs> is that kind of the moral of the story that you came up with, or do you have to? Yeah, you nailed it. You nailed it. yeah that's, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's it. <laughs> Computers will ruin you eventually, is basically what, what, what the moral is. I've learned that they'll do that whenever I'm on a deadline. That's, yeah. that's oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for me, yeah, so. yeah. We're all familiar with that. <laughs> 
<laughs> Otherwise, everything's just golden. Anything that I haven't asked you guys that it's just like, why didn't she ask me this? Things that you really want people to know that I have not touched on. Uh, I would just like Bobby to get more recognition as a uh, spectacular in, uh, in front of camera talent as our show. Oh, yeah. I feel like that's not brought up enough. <laughs> I'm this now, character. Are yeah. you the only one on the team with this cameo, or 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 are some of the other members in there as well? Um, no, I think I'm. I might be the only one that got thrown to the, uh, you know, in front of <laughs> yeah. camera wolves. Yeah. You know, yeah. And I think that's probably because I've known Scott the longest, so he knew he knew he could abuse my trust. You know, we, yeah. we can go ahead and say and introducing Bobby Brinkerhoff <laughs> as yes. the conjurer. I love it. Yes, yes. <laughs> I love it. Guys, anything else? And where can people get more? Where, where can people see this? Give me, give me the website. Give me how people can go ahead and uh, find out more. Actionmanthemovie.com. Actionmanthemovie.com. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Our Instagram is also actionman at actionmanthemovie. Uh, we're currently playing Slam Dance, uh, and we're also playing a couple other festivals coming up. But yeah. Awesome. Check out the for more info. Thank you guys so much for taking time. I mean, because everybody's working again now. So for you to take the time to do this, Roy, I know you're on set. Bryant, you're out there in the trenches working. Scott, I know that you're really going ahead and giving it your all from your home. Same with you, Bobby. Yeah, I'm in my studio. Which is there my you go. I, I, lo I love those those long commutes down the hallway. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. This is what I've learned as being the benefit from the pandemic. My commutes are a lot shorter these days. I love that part. And well, actually, I have, I have one last question. <laughs> or, um, there's very little dialogue in the film. Um, was that purposeful so you can have an international audience, or was it just because you don't like writing dialogue? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I didn't have any confidence with writing dialogue. It's it, more just to, I, I like visual stories, you know, and, you know, silent movies are cool, I think. It's it, like I like to be able to just watch a movie without, you know, without relying on having to pay close attention to dialogue. And, and I think it's just more impactful when, when you see something unfold rather than you, you hear about it, you know? Because I guess in some situations, someone would have written a self talking to your dialogue. Like, okay, <laughs> what, what is this button? Should I push this button? And you felt differently. Yeah. I, I just, I, I don't know. I, I, you know, it's for me knowing Bob and Bryant were working on it. It, it like, I thought it would be a stronger statement to let, you know, Bryant's visuals and Bob's music do the talking because the, you know, that, that's, that's what I love about, about movies is like cool visuals paired with cool music. And you, you get the story from that. And that's, you know, um, that's, that's what I wanted to lean on for the, to tell the story. When you look at, uh, our history together, we've worked on so many music videos, concert visuals, um, I think that's like our, I don't want to say it's a comfort zone. I think it was more instinctual to be like, yeah, we tell me, we tell stories and create emotions with just visuals and music all the time. We're not really uh, aspiring screenwriters. We're like everybody on the team making, um, you know, non-lyric driven stories, you know, impactful. So I, I think it was like a natural fit. I don't, I don't think we ever thought about it, but now that we're talking about it, that seems to make sense that yeah. we make a movie with very little dialogue. <laughs> Well, the, the yeah, music, I, the music was, is a character in the movie. I mean, that's yeah, what right. that's what's helping yeah. drive the visuals, if you will. I think that they work very yeah. well in conjunction with one another. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, Brian, were you going to say something on the? Yeah, oh, I was just going to say, like, it was such a pleasure this, because this was, uh, you know, this doesn't have the dialogue uh, to drive things as much. It was so nice to have something that is we're we're kind of communicating via visual languages, and that. I mean, for a cinematographer, that's what you're trying to do all the time. Um, and then also what Bob was saying, like I come from a music video background. We all kind of have various interactions with music, but I guess that does make sense that we would just approach this from more of a visual and auditory standpoint. But telling stories with visuals, I think, is is a is a kind of the 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 the, the holy grail. What you're looking to do in general sometimes dialogue almost gets in the way. And this was really nice to sort of just approach it from the beginning of like, we're telling the story with images and with audio cues, but it's it's not about dialogue. It's about, it's a story that anyone can kind of watch. It doesn't matter 
what language you speak. It really is a time-honored tradition using visuals to tell a story, using music to tell a story. The dialogue is something that's developed over time, and that's very subjective. People can interpret things different ways, but it seems as though music and visuals, that's that's the glue that kind of holds society together and propels us forward. So good job, guys. Good job. I also want to give credit to our, our actors, uh, Shun, who gives like a very physical, almost Kaplan-esque yeah. performance. And then Ronnie, um, who played the, the main shaman who meets him as well, just like having such a presence and being able to communicate so much with just a look on their faces. I thought they all did such a fantastic job. That's a the good entire, yeah. I, I would say that they definitely deserve that shout out. And congratulations to the entire team. You've done, a, done an amazing job with us. So I look Thank forward to interviewing you guys again on your next projects. Awesome. Much. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Thanks for being here. Again, right. Sue Lawson, Indie Film Nation with Bruce Timoblau, Bobby Brinkerhoff, Scott uh, Scott Peters, Bryant Jansen, Roy Chung. I think I got everybody there. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye. Break it free from the mainstream, the studio machine. I want it my way. Indie Film Nation. You know it's got to be. Indie Film Nation.